the education department at the Akron Zoo, and we have a real treat for you today. You are going to get to take a sneak peek behind the scenes at Wild Asia, which is still very much under construction, as you can probably see in the background. But before we head into the construction zone, we have a little animal friend for you to meet, and she is a very appropriate animal to meet for this segment because Jade is an Asian fox turtle. Now, you're not gonna see Jade when we finally do get to open Wild Asia next year, but she is one of our ambassador animals. And so maybe if you schedule one of our virtual encounters or when people do get to come back to the zoo, Jade is an animal you might see out with a staff member so you can get a little more up close and in person. Now, Asian box turtles are also known as Chinese box turtles and and the yellow margined box turtle. And the one thing that Jade has in common with some of the animals that you're going to see in Wild Asia is the fact that she is an endangered species, which of course means that there's not many of these turtles left in their native habitat. And unfortunately, that is the case for a lot of turtles worldwide. Many people don't realize that turtles and tortoises are some of the animal species that are really in crisis in our world. Now, a lot of that is due to habitat destruction in their native lands, but unfortunately, a lot of it is also due to poaching. Turtles and tortoises are poached for their meat. They are also poached for traditional medicine practices, and they are poached for the pet trade as well. Now, as far as Jade's story and how she came to be here at Akron Zoo, she's actually one of our newer animals. We have just had her since the fall of 2019, and she came to us from the Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle, where she had been there for about five years. And she was a breeding turtle there, so she had a, a boyfriend that she lived with, and they actually did have several clutches of eggs. And I do know that some of those eggs actually hatched and turned into little baby turtles as well. But when it was decided that Jade was no longer going to be a part of the breeding program, Woodland was looking for a new home for her. And our ambassador program here at the Akron Zoo was a perfect fit. But the really great story about Jade is the fact that she actually came to Woodland Park Zoo from the Turtle Survival Alliance. And this is an international organization that really is working hard to try to stop the poaching efforts on the world's turtles and tortoises and work to conserve their native habitats as well. And without the work of that organization, we wouldn't have Jade here at Akron Zoo to introduce to you today. So she is a really, really fun turtle. I have to say that when she first came to us, she was a little on the shy side. And now this is gonna be a really good pun. Are you ready for it? She's really come out of her shell since she's been here. She uh -huh. actually is now very curious. She enjoys hanging out with our Eastern box turtles that we also have here at the Akron Zoo in our ambassador group. And those three ladies love just hanging out in their outside play yard, taking a swim together. We say they need little drinks with umbrellas in them when they're out there. They look like they're sunbathing. So Jade, I think, is really fitting into her new home here at Akron Zoo. She also loves being outside. So even though it is a drizzly rainy day, she is so curious looking around here. And I'm certain noticing all the sounds and sights in the construction zone behind us, which I think we are ready to head into. So enjoy your trip of Wild Asia, and thanks for joining us. All right, well now we are gonna head into the construction site. Morning, everybody. I'm Chris Norman. I'm Director of Capital Projects and Sustainability here at your Akron Zoo. And I'm here with my trusty sidekick, Eric Albers. Yeah, Eric Albers. I'm Curator of Animal Operations and work with Chris very closely on the design and implementation of any of our ideas. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks, Deborah, for your great educational learning. That was fantastic. What about Jade? So we're going to discover some more about our new exhibit, Wild Asia. Um, Wild Asia, as Deborah mentioned, is scheduled to open uh, next year, um, and we're excited about that. Uh, despite the weather, we're working very hard, you can see. So this entryway here, this is the, the entry, you can see the, the columns that are set up for Wild Asia. This, is, this will create a, a beautiful archway that will evoke a national park uh, entryway you might find in uh, in South, Southern Asia. 
Um, and then along our, our pathway here on the left, we have Tiger Yard 1 for our Sumatran Tigers. And there'll be a sneak peek as you come through. Uh, I don't know if this will be fully landscaped in here, but there'll be a, a, a beautiful sneak peek. And I'm going to step around here just to kind of illustrate. There'll be a, a, a tiger blind with different unique views and families can walk up and they can kind of sneak in. We'll look through the little area there and see if they can find the Sumatran Tigers. And once you spot them, then you can come around the, the, uh, the pathway on your way to the main viewing building that we're, that we're constructing. So this is going to be really cool. You can see the holding uh, building, the, their, their main home there in the background, and the viewing building is there on the right with the, with the three windows. So again, what animal is going to be in this habitat this right here? The Sumatran Tigers, and there's only 400 left in the wild. And so we're uh, working with the, uh, with the conservation groups to help raise awareness of uh, the, the plight of Sumatran tigers. Of course, they're under threat primarily through uh, poaching and habitat loss. One of the ways that we can help guard against habitat loss is to look for sustainable palm oil in any of our products. And if you Google sustainable palm oil, you'll find that there are apps you can download on your phone. And so you can uh, take the app and you can go to a barcode and it'll tell you if that product has uh, sustainable palm oil. So it's a way to help guard against mm -hmm. habitat loss for Sumatra tigers. So here's our tiger, here's our tiger view. And then once you, once you hit the sneak peek, you make your way around the pathway. Now this is really cool. Our partners at uh, Environmental Design Group in Akron have designed this detention basin here on the right. Now it's going to be fully landscaped. Uh, and that this will trap uh, the storm water, all the storm water coming off the site in Wild Asia will be slowed down here and then in, during a, a rain event and then it'll be slowly released into the, uh, into the city storm system. But it'll be fully landscaped. I know it's, it's, it's quite a sight today, but, uh, but this, this will be a kind of a unique element that uh, EDG Environmental Design Group has designed for us. We're really excited about that. And of course, it overlooks our uh, Roger Sherman hospital our veterinary care. So uh, Chris, just to give people who've been to the Akron Zoo um, their bearings, where are we standing right now? Where did it used to be before construction? Oh, right. So Wild Asia is a renovation of, of the uh, old, what had been Tiger Valley. So Tiger Valley was the first state-of-the-art exhibitry here at the Akron Zoo. It was constructed in 1998. Um, so Tiger Valley, so Wild Asia is really sort of taking and creating new homes for uh, tigers and red pandas that had been part of uh, Tiger Valley. And we also are reintroducing uh, white cheek gibbon here to the park, to, uh, gibbon here at the mm -hmm. park. We're very excited about that. So, we're standing in Oh, standing in lion. Oh, yeah. Eric is pointing <laughs> out that literally yeah. we're, we're standing, standing in, in the old lion exhibit right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is cool. So this area will overlook, of course, the corporate tent area with the picnics, and then just right off adjacent from the Carousel Plaza in Komodo Kingdom. So we'll make our way, continue on down here to the pathway, and here on the left with, with Tiger Yard 1, on our way to the main uh, tiger viewing. Now it's kind of sloppy today with the rain. So we're waiting for the bud. And we apologize, construction sites are really loud, so we'll make sure that you guys can hear us as best as we can. So Eric and I and Elena, we're gonna make our way up to the upper viewing here. Tiger Valley is designed by, Tiger Valley is designed by Hobbs Stop Architects, uh, incorporated here in Akron, along with GLMV. With GLMV, and they are uh, national architects and designers and we're working with Panzeca construction out of uh, the Cleveland area for the actual fabrication of these imagery. So we're in upper the upper viewing. To our left you can see uh, down under the seating area this atrium uh, viewing for Tiger Yard 1 and there's three windows down there uh, behind the gentlemen that are working. The center window is where we'll have all of our Tiger training uh, going on and so they'll be regularly scheduled keeper talks to talk about uh, the, the special care that we're providing for our tigers, uh, the, the behaviors that are encouraged to ensure that they are in full health. But the viewing will allow unique views of the tigers in their new habitat. Um, of course, up above, you can see this mezzanine. This will all be glassed in. So there's an upper deck as well as the lower viewing 
and there's a, a, a skylight or an oculus that's in the middle of that deck. So when you're in the lower viewing, you could be surrounded, or the upper, you could be surrounded by tigers in, in Tiger Yard 1 and then on Tiger Yard 2 behind us. Tiger Yard 2 is, is uh, featured. Oh, we're going to do a little dance here. Uh, Tiger Yard 2 features this pool um, here in the, in the front that the tigers will be able to use and kind of cool off in the warmer months. And we've got, you know, really interesting views, I think, for, for everybody, you know, here looking up the hillside. This will be fully landscaped for this, that immersive experience as you're, as you're learning about the Sumatra tiger. I think that uh, Dixon Studios did a fantastic job with the rock work mm -hmm. for us. Now tigers, do they like to swim? Yeah, tigers, unlike a lot of other cats, will get in the water and like to swim a lot. They can swim across rivers or whatever they need to to get around their habitat out in the wild. Here, they'll be able to come in. They can either come down and step into the pool, as you can see on the side, or down a ramp, in and out. Um, our old tigers in the other exhibit, people remember the old pool area. They would lay up in the shallow areas or actually sometimes be down in the deeper part of the pool playing with diff different items that might be in the pool or just actually cooling off, especially like this week when it's been 90 degrees. So where did the animals that were in Tiger Valley go? Um, the tiger who was here, Bandar, actually went out to Point Client Zoo out in Washington, um, in Tacoma, and he's doing very well out there. The last everything I've been hearing. So he's doing well. The red panda that was here, I'm, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. New Where Jersey? New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, he might, you're right. He went out to his, uh, might have been Turtleback Zoo out in New Jersey now that I'm thinking about it. That was actually, if people remember, this has been going on for a while, so it's hard to remember <laughs> sometimes when we move the animals. So, would those animals be coming back, or are we getting new animals? Um, there actually be new, new animals. We're getting in two new tigers from different facilities. Uh, Gibbons, obviously, we haven't had here for quite some time, and not this, not this species. And then we also, the red pandas will be coming in. And people are used to a single red panda on exhibit here. That won't be the case anymore. We will have multiple red pandas on exhibit. So, Patty, you're asking about the lions. They have moved up to our new area, Pride of Africa, on the top of the hill. And that opened last Pride, summer. Pride of Africa. Yeah, we're very excited about that one. It opened last summer. And these, and these two projects, Pride of Africa and Wild Age, are very much working together. They're, they're sort of phase one and phase two of the overall big exhibit work uh, that the Akron Zoo has got this, this uh, levy period. And the other thing I wanted to mention was that, uh, and Eric can expound on this certainly, the tigers that, uh, that the zoo is getting ready to receive are part of a species survival plan. So the species survival plan, many of the species uh, that are in, in care of of uh, the zoological uh, AZA, the American Zoo Association, uh, or zoo, <laughs> zoo and Association of Zoos and Aquariums, um, they are managed so that we can ensure the biological genetic diversity within each species for 100 years out. So it's a unique program to ensure that we have species for 100 years plus, and it's through that program we've been able to reintroduce species into the wild around the world as habitats are healing and public policies are improving to support these species. So it's a really critical program, and all the species that we uh, in our care here in Wild Asia will be part of an SSP. So will we? Yeah. So we will have some SSPs and breeding recommendations for any of the animals. Yeah, we do have already have know that we have breeding recommendations for the tigers that are coming, as well as the gibbons. On um, the red pandas, we will in the future, just not immediately. Um, due to the group that we'll be bringing in. But we're very excited. It'll be cool to really have the cubs back here on grounds again. It's been several years since we've had tiger cubs, if people remember back, I think it was 2000 or 1999 when Raguno Akabi was born. All right. So, again, guys, we are in the middle of an active construction site. So we do apologize. It's very noisy, but we'll do our it's best to make sure you can hear us. So after exploring Sumatran tigers here in, in the tiger viewing, we would make our way. There's two ways you can go. You can either come back down the stairs or when the pathway is ready, you can head out the pathway. Wild Asia, we're gonna head down the stairs because it's a little safer today. Um, Wild Asia will enable us to once again have ADA uh, 
access throughout the park. And we've had to uh, make do during construction, so we're excited about that for all of our visitors. Mobility challenge. Um, so coming out of, of uh, Tiger View, and then we'll head out, make our way up to the rest of Wild Asia. So uh, the next stop, we'll take a peek at the Red Panda. The Red Panda features uh, a reclaimed building, or a renovated building, part of the project, that is the A-frame building. At one time, the A-frame building housed uh, Gibbon when we first opened Tiger Valley. So it's part of Wild Asia. Thank you. This will be a nice large plaza that families can uh, get a, something, a refreshment. We'll have a food truck here, as well as seating along the hillside. As you can see the hillside here, there's, there's going to be a terraced uh, rock seat wall. And at the top, there'll be the, um, the upper viewing for the treehouse viewing for White Cheek Gibbon we'll talk about in a moment. Would you mind mentioning again what habitat this will be? Sure. So we're, we're looking at the red panda. Uh, habitat that's under construction of course. We're using the A-frame as the main home for the red panda and their habitat will be out here. And Elena, we kind of make our way out here a little bit to get a sneak peek. So you can see the, some of the rock work um, that, that is here. And we're, we've got lots of landscaping and work to do, you can see. But once again, Dixon, uh, Dixon did a fan design did a fantastic job, I think, with the rock work. This will provide a conditioned space for our red panda uh, so that even in the hottest summer months, they can be cool customers. Um, lots of climbing. It'll be fully enclosed, just like Tiger Yard 1. Fully enclosed so the animals will have access 24 hours a day. Uh, it can overnight and everything, so we're excited about that. Um, but this will be, uh, the theming and everything is to evoke uh, Tibet, where red panda, that area of the Himalayas is where the red panda are native. All right, and if anybody remembers this old A-frame building, um, we are standing where the old um, nature's play area was, all those ropes to play with. That is what used to be right here. Yeah, Elena, actually the old, what's gonna be the new Red Panda exhibit, is what people might remember as the uh, former lemurs or given exhibit. It's basically about that same footprint. Awesome. The only part of Old Tiger Valley that remains standing. These guys are staying busy. You know, it's been amazing uh, the dedication that Panzeca and, and uh, Phoenix and Chieftain and all the different subs have, have had to go through and, and, and help make this exhibit possible. We're really excited about it. Now, where the backhoe is working is the uh, lower viewing for the White Sheep Gibbon. Um, so he's excavating there. Uh, this will also feature the training wall for the White Chief Gibbon, where again, just like in Tiger, we're gonna have a training wall uh, so that we can have regular discussions with the keepers to talk about all the different things we're doing uh, to help ensure that our Gibbon are, are healthy and, and uh, happy. Uh, and th so that'll be a great opportunity, I think, for all of our guests. The lower viewing also looks into the day room. So the building here to the right is the uh, is the is the uh, primary the day room for the white cheek gibbon? Um, again, kind of evoking the part of Asia where they're from, uh, and it's it's a it's a beautiful. I, mean, I know it's it's still under construction, but the views I think are going to be fantastic. Now we're going to step around inside uh, so you can see inside the day room. You can see that the glass has not been installed yet, but this habitat is very steep. It goes up, makes its way up the hill and we're planning on having uh, a scaffolding, and there'll be a big tree that we're that Dixon's gonna fabricate there, and from there we'll have all kinds of uh, locomotion opportunities for the, for the gibbon, because they like to, uh, they, they brachiate, they move you know, hand over hand through the treetops. So there, uh, this will include uh, also a tree house at the top of the hill where our, our, our guests can come and get unique views of the gibbon, but also there's gonna be a slide, and I think that some of the kids will really enjoy the, enjoy the slide. So is the slide for the Gibbons or for our guests? The slide is for our guests. All right. 
So now not only will we have the fun otter slide, but we'll have a given slide given too. Slide right. So we can sneak our way in. Of course, with the, with the weather, as many people as possible are working inside, of course. Uh, but we're going to get a sneak peek inside the day room, and you can kind of get a feel. Now this is a three-story space. It's very tall. Again, Gibbons are treetop dwellers there. So um, we're going to have lots of perching and things inside. It should be very active. We'll make our way around okay. here. Will the rope area be, the play area be back? No, unfortunately nature's play, um, it, we had, we enjoyed that, but um, that, that had to go away to make room for Wild Asia. Now we're always planning, we've always got lots of ideas, and I'm hoping someday soon we'll find another play area outside for our guests, but unfortunately nature's play had to had to go away for now. So do we have any other upcoming projects that we're working on? Or is it just Wild Asia? Wild Asia right now. Um, I think that we'll probably see a renovation of uh, Curious Creatures. It'll probably be the next uh, big project. Um, we are planning what the next big exhibit is uh, for the next levy period, but still pretty early to, to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, we take a peek. This is the keeper area. We've got a keeper kitchen. Uh, these walls will be set up so we've got uh, restroom and shower facilities. Given taking care of Gibbons can be kind of messy sometimes, um, but this would be a nice uh, space for staff are preparing uh, meals, etc., for the Gibbon. And we get the lower viewing. There's also an upper viewing, but we're going to step into the lower viewing. Of course, our guests, our guests would be viewing outside the windows here, so you just have to kind of use your imagination. So standing outside you know, behind me, the views for the guests would be looking up into the space. We would have platforms and ropes and things all through here. Gibbons would be swinging all around. Uh, they're very vocal as well, so there'd be a lot of activity in here. Um, this wall, the this, this cement block wall, that gray wall, is going to be treated so that it's going to look like a ruin, a brand new ruin, can you imagine? But we have uh, artists that we're working with to uh, decorate all inside of here, so it's going to be very immersive. You'll feel like you're looking in the jungle in uh, Southeast Asia, and you can see that the gibbon are, are all throughout here um, having, having a grand old time. So we're actually standing in where the gibbons will be. Yes, yes, we're in their habitat right now. So you guys will stand just on the other side on of the other these side. windows. That's right. Now we have, uh, we have what we call transfer doors so that the Gibbons can leave their bedroom on the other side of that, that cement black wall. They can leave their bedrooms and come out into their main habitat. Uh, this, this day room will be available for the Gibbons year round. But also, they, they can go out another transfer door right into their outdoor habitat. That ha outdoor habitat, right through the door there, there's another one straight from their bedroom. So there's lots of choices uh, for the Gibbon. Um, that will enable them to be outside, as I mentioned, brachiating, swinging, you know, from vine to vine or rope to rope, uh, all throughout that outdoor exhibit. Um, and it being enclosed enables them to have access 24 hours. You know, this Wild Asia is the biggest project, uh, especially combined with Pride of Africa, that the zoo has ever undertaken. I think that this set of exhibits at Wild Asia is certainly the most complex that we've undertaken um, in the last you know, 10 years. You know, the indoor space, three fully enclosed uh, habitats. We're really, really excited about it. And I think our families are going to really have a great time watching the gibbons at work. Now, Eric, for somebody who's not familiar about what a gibbon is, can you explain what Would a gibbon is? Demonstrate, Eric. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, I the ropes here yet. <laughs> um, gibbons are what you would call a lesser great great ape. It is a primate. They've got really long arms, so they like to, as Chris said earlier, brachiate and swing from place to place up in the trees. So are they a monkey? Monkeys, if I get all my terminology right, monkeys are primates. They're actually more of a, in the ape family, more of the great apes, more related to gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees. Monkeys have tails and apes don't, is that right? Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking about it. That's the history major. Mm -hmm. right, so. our, our gibbons will not have tails. Right. So, so do the gibbons have an outside area as well? 
yes, they have a huge outside area of the yard. We, we kind of pointed it out on our way in. Um, that habitat is on that, that hillside out on the other side of this wall. And we can take another look as we come out the building here in a minute. Now there's unique views, not only from the lower where we're standing, but also around the building at the upper portion. Uh, now there's a, a window up there um, and you know, looking back into the day room, but also uh, as, a, as a unique view into the uh, day room off to, the, up, it'd be off to our, our left. But when you're up there, of course, be on your right. Yes, Chris, the lemurs will still be by the penguins. Our lemur building's not going anywhere. All right. Okay. So I don't know if we want to try and brave our way around to the upper viewing. It's still really rough. Um, but we can come back out here and get another view of that main habitat. So as I mentioned, um, the, the guest pathway will be right along this uh, this this area. We would be walking up. Um, you can see the pardon me, Eric. You can see the retaining wall here on our right. This will be fully landscaped and everything, so shield some of our our views of our facilities and grounds you know we're doing a lot of work behind the scenes here at the, at the park um, but there's a switchback maybe we can take a look so this pathway will come up oh yeah this pathway will, will come up for our guests and to the end of the wall and then we'll do a switchback so we'll come back toward the building uh, on the way to the main upper viewing and again all of this is to ensure that all of our guests you know regardless of their uh, mobility uh, you know, uh, challenges they can. So, if you've got a stroller you're pushing or a wheelchair with uh, your grandparents or whatever, your guests uh, will be able to make their way up to the building. Now, you can see here from the side, kind of up the, up the hill, there's the upper viewing. See with the there to the far right, it's right now it's enclosed in white. That'll be the upper viewing looking back into the day room. Uh, to the right, you can see the main habitat there, and the switchback would then continue on from that upper viewing back into the hillside and then up along the uh, stockade fence where the white conduit are currently that all that stuff's going to be renovated. So it's really still quite a project in process but we're excited to show everybody and give them kind of a sneak peek. Um, Eric and, and so many of our staff we meet every week going through the details of the project working with Hazenstab with Panzeca. Um, we've had fantastic support through uh, Marker Business Advisors as well. Um, so we're just really excited about it. Can't wait for next spring or summer to get our, our opening underway. So what has been the most challenging part of construction so far? The hillside. <laughs> the weather doesn't help either, but you can see it's a very steep site. Uh, that's why all these uh, retaining walls. Uh, if the, for those that remember uh, Tiger Valley, you know, we had uh, asphalt uh, pathway that did a switch back as well right in front of the a-frame and came back up this we're looking we're developing this much more intensely so that we can have a larger habitat for each animal uh, whether it's the gibbon or the red panda or the sumatran tigers um, but to make the use of this whole hillside we've had to use some of these different retaining systems so what is the process for getting the animals once construction is complete once construction's done, um, we'll be ready to bring the animals in. We already do know, and we'll announce that fun fact later on where they're coming from. But we work with the other zoo, and there's actually can be a process. It can be as simple as moving an animal into its, con I guess you could say the crate. It's actually like a dog kennel in some cases, or very similar uh, for the red pandas. Would go in it, and we would actually transport them, possibly, probably by land from where they're coming from. When you're talking about a tiger, it's a little different. It gets, you know, you had a bigger animal and obviously a much more dangerous animal than moving a red panda. So for that, they actually have a specially designed crate that the animals will go into. The best thing that we do with a lot of other zoos, as well as us, is we can voluntarily train them to go into that container, into that crate. And they'll get used to it. We let them get used to it. So when they actually do move to another facility, it's not a big deal. They're used to that being in it. 
In fact, in some cases you get an animal that likes it so much he won't come back out of it um, when you're doing your training. But the trainers here, the keepers here, and at the other facilities work really hard to make sure that goes as smoothly as possible. Sometimes they will fly, will fly the animals depending upon where they are in the situation, or we may do it by land. Whether we go get them, the other facility will bring them to us, or there's actually some people out there that that is their job. They're used to moving zoo animals and they move everything from a small bird up to a giraffe. So are the animals stressed out during their journey? The animals, our goal is to make it as stress-free as possible for them. Everything we do ahead of time, like I said, some of the training, getting them used to the, the crate they'll be in, then that helps a lot. So the more they're used to it, the more calm it is. Most of the times when I've done, and I've done several of the moves, you can, the animals will sleep most of the time, that they're actually comfortable. Now I know you touched on it a little bit before, but do you mind mentioning how many tigers, how many red pandas, how many gibbons are, are coming? Right now we're, we've got two tigers, two gibbons, and right now we have three red pandas coming to the exhibit. Okay. So just to, to kind of help recap for us, the, the switch back here will take, uh, take guests up to the upper viewing, then on the way back up the hill uh, to the tree house. Let's see if we can get a little better view here. Um, you have to use very your muddy. Pretty, <laughs> I wish I kind of make our way a little bit to get a little better view, um, Alina. So you can see the back, see the, the brick building there at the end of the stockade fence. Um, where the, the soil mounds up in front of it, that's approximately where that tree house is going to be located. That's where we'll have uh, unique views of the gibbons and their habitat, but also the slide that we mentioned. Now, once folks have had a chance to kind of take their, their views, um, then you'd make your way back up to the Eagle Plaza. Eagle Plaza, of course, puts you right there at the, uh, the intersection. You can either go up the hillside there to, uh, to Grizzly Ridge, or turn right, go up to Grasslands Cafe, get a refreshment and hang out at Wild Prairie Pavilion. And so if somebody that. doesn't want to walk up that really big hill, there'll once again be an alternate route? An alternate route. This will be, I think, a favorite pathway um, for our guests because as I say, it's ADA friendly. Uh, and also on these switchbacks, there'll be a node at the end to, um, so folks can take a breather. Uh, if they brought a sandwich, they can you know, have a snack or a, uh, some other refreshment, but um, it just weighs lots of spaces for our folks to enjoy the park and enjoy their, their time here at the Akron Zoo. This uh, habitat, as I mentioned, is right in the heart of the zoo. And that's part of what's made it so challenging, not only the hillside, but to maintain access for all the operations that are ongoing here uh, at the zoo. That's why it's been so critical to have the team pulled together that we do have. You, know, you gotta realize it's not just our animal care uh, staff, but also facilities and grounds, our guest services, even the communications and education department um, have to have to do their programs and, and their events. And I say that because we just met Deborah, and of course Elaine is doing this. So all that coordination is so critical. Um, but as I say, really excited about it. We, we plan for uh, many, many years of enjoyment here mm -hmm. in, in Wild Asia. So for those asking about when the zoo is going to reopen at this time, uh, we do not know. Um, we are waiting to hear from the governor on when we will be able to reopen, but just know we are ready to go. We miss you guys. We do. Well, great. So again, thanks for letting us share a sneak peek of uh, Wild Asia. And, uh, and I want to thank Deborah again for, for her program. That was great. And uh, Eric, <laughs> Thanks for keeping everything going. <laughs> so come back to come to the Akron Zoo as soon as we open. We're looking forward to seeing you guys. Have a great one.